In this demonstration, we'll see how to configure a virtual load balancer for Exchange Server Client Access Services. So what we have here is we have a little load balancer, it's a community edition, Zen, so it's based on Debian uh, Linux. Uh, what we've got here is we've currently got nothing configured, but what we want to do is we want to configure load balancing for the client access services on our two Exchange servers, LON EX1 and LON EX2. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a virtual network interface that will be used as the load balancer IP address. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to come up to our settings, I'm going to go to our interfaces and what I want to do at this point here is I want to add my virtual interface. And in order to do that, come along to the third button, click on the plus. What we'll do is make this Ethernet interface 1. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just specify the IP address as 172.16.0.100. So this is the IP address we're going to use for the load balancer. Once we've done all of that, we'll just save this off. Now uh, we've now saved off our virtual interface. Now that we've saved off the virtual interface, the next thing we need to do is we need to start creating our load balance cluster. And in order to do that, we can do that by creating a form. So all we're going to do here is we're going to come to manage and we're going to come to forms. Then within the forms, what we need to do is we then need to create our form that will be used for adding our two exchange servers. So what I'll do here is I'll give the form description a name here and I'm going to create this for my OWA so I'm going to call it exchange OWA and we're going to use that for TCP and we'll save and continue next thing to do is specify the virtual IP so we're going to use the virtual interface that we created and we're going to use that for SSL so that's port 443 and then we'll select save that will then create the form once we've created the form, the next thing we need to do is we then need to uh, actually configure the form. And in order to do that, we'll just edit the form. What we're going to do here is, as you can see here, the load balance algorithm is round robin, so equal sharing. I'm not going to bother enable client IP persistence. One of them fails, I don't want uh, things timing out. Other things we'll do at this point here now is we now need to come in here and we need to start actually adding in our exchange server. So we'll just modify the setting first. And then we'll scroll down here and what we're looking for here is edit the real IP server config. So this is where we add the servers. So we'll select add. Uh, what we'll do for the first server is it's going to be 172.16.0.14. We're going to do that for port 443. We use SSL by default. Maximum connections, I'll just specify zero. Weight will be zero. Priority will be zero. And then all we'll do is we'll save that off. And then what we'll do is we'll add an additional server. And for this one here, we're going to add in 172.16.0.15. Again, that's going to be on port 443. Specify again, zero for maximum connections, weight, zero, and zero for priority. And we'll save that off again. And now what we've done is we've now added our servers into the form. So once we've got this all saved off, the next thing to do is just have a look to see if this is actually working correctly. So if we scroll up to the top again, we've got our monitoring tab. Within our monitoring tab, what we want to monitor at this point here is just connection stats. That brings us into Exchange OWA. So what we've got here is the first one we've got here is show the connection graphs for the form Exchange OWA. And what we can see at this point here is it's unable to generate the form graph. We haven't actually got anything connected through. We've just purely created at this point here the actual form itself. So what we'll now have a look at is we'll just have a look at view the Exchange OWA backend stats. We've got two green blobs. Two green blobs means the two servers are actually up and running and are receiving connections. And all we'll do at this point here is we'll just refresh the stats, let's say, every 30 seconds. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.